Hey, this is Ryan from webeminence.com. I'm going to show another email a tip that's going to be handy for you people out there who are finding that you're always hitting your max quota on your email storage, and there may be a quick fix for that for most people. Now, you'll probably only run into this problem if you have your own email hosting on your own domain name. If you use Gmail or Yahoo or something like that, they give you so much email storage that you're never really going to hit the limit. So even if you mismanage your email and never delete them, it's never going to be an issue. But if you're paying for email hosting on your own domain name, or if you're one of my clients and you have email through my email hosting, you don't have as much email storage. So it's important to manage your email well and also change this one setting so that you're not continually hitting your email quota because if you do you're going to stop getting emails. So let me give you a quick description of what I'm talking about here in case you can't tell from my uh, awesome drawing here. This represents the internet where the emails come from. This here represents your email server. So if you're one of my clients this is my server with HostGator.com where your emails are hosted. And down here is your email client, which would be your computer or your phone. And that's where you ultimately read your emails. So when someone sends you an email, it goes to your email host where it is stored. So let's just say this box here represents your email storage limit. So whenever an email comes in, it takes up a little bit of space in your email storage. And when you're on your email client, your phone or your computer, and you send a request to the email host for your email address using what's called POP3 protocol in most cases. Some people might use something called IMAP, and in this case, none of this really matters as much. As long as you delete your emails, you'll never run into this problem. But for those who use POP3, which is very popular, the email client sends a request to the email server and says, please send me a list of the messages. And the email server sends it back to the email client so that the emails show up on your screen. Now, when they're sent to the email client, if you don't have the right settings set up, it will not delete them from the server. So as many times as you go to the email server and get the emails back, they're going to keep piling up here. So you might get some emails from your phone and you read them and they keep piling up. So over months and months, this just begins to get full. It's kind of like going to your mailbox at the end of your street and making copies of the mail and leaving a copy in your mailbox. It wouldn't make much sense. Um, eventually it's going to get full and you're not going to get any mail. So that's what happens with an email server too. Eventually this gets full and the whole thing explodes. Okay, no, it doesn't explode, but it will get full and you'll stop getting emails. And that's a huge problem for your business. When someone sends you an email, it's going to bounce and say that the email address is full. So there's an easy way to keep this from happening. So basically what we're going to do is activate a setting on your email clients so that when email is downloaded from the server, it's actually deleted from the server so that it's no longer taking up space, but it will be stored on your local email clients here, either your phone or your email client on your computer. So essentially, whenever email is downloaded from the server, this space will be freed up to receive more email. So I'm going to show you how to ensure that emails are not left on your mail server, but they're downloaded to your mail client and deleted from your email server so that you don't stack up emails on your email server and use up all your storage space. So for example, I'm using Windows Live Mail. The setting is going to be very similar no matter what email client you're using, whether it's Thunderbird, Outlook, Outlook Express, or Mac Mail the setting is typically always the same. So in Windows Live Mail, you would actually click on Accounts and then Properties. And then under the Advanced tab, you'll see down towards the bottom under Delivery, 
it says leave a copy of messages on server. Sometimes it'll say delete messages on server, but whatever way it's worded, you want to make sure that you're not leaving a copy of messages on the server. So in this case, I would leave this unchecked. Another option would be to leave a copy of the messages on server, but to remove them from the server after a number of days. So this might be useful for some people if you're using a smartphone and a mail client on your computer to leave a copy on the server for a few days. The key is to eventually delete them so that it's not stacking up emails over months and months and eventually hitting your storage quota. So this is the setting you need to make. In my case, I just leave this unchecked so that a copy of the messages is not left on the server and it's deleted as soon as I download the message into Windows Live Mail. So go ahead and click OK. So once you save that setting, your email will be downloaded to your email client like Windows Live Mail and the messages will be deleted from your server so that you'll never run into storage issues with your server or have to log in every once in a while and delete old emails just to make up space so that your email can start functioning again. So hopefully this helps those of you out there who didn't have this one setting set up correctly and kept running into email storage issues. I know a lot of my clients had this issue and that's one of the reasons I made this video just to show them uh, what's going on and show them the, the very easy way to correct this issue so that they're not hitting their email storage limits and they can make sure that their email is always functioning correctly and they're always able to receive emails. So if you found this helpful, I'd appreciate it if you click the like button on YouTube and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can check out the future videos that I make. If you have any suggestions for tips or questions that might come in handy and I could do a video on it, let me know. Send a comment on YouTube or on my blog if you're watching this video on my blog. Thanks for watching and we'll see you around on the next video.